I think a lot of the thing that people struggle with a lot when you go from privateer, especially racing at high level privateer, mm. and then going factory, from what my people I've talked to have said, yeah. it's like all of a sudden you have more time. Yeah. So it's like previously all of the distractions from racing are actually mm-hmm. something that actually helps you. You're yeah, trying yeah. to like get your bike clean and get it ready yeah. or whatever. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, um, well, for them, they were it was their first year as well. So they were probably learning as well. So I didn't I didn't have a mechanic. Well, I had Mark, he was a mechanic, but he was a mechanic for about five people. So I ended up, and I'm really picky with my bike, so I was like, mm, I think I'll just do it. So I ended up just being my own mechanic anyway. Right. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, you. I would say that that is true. I don't know if the people you've spoken to, it's probably more downhill yeah. uh, who have that feeling yeah. where distraction can be good. Um, but in enduro, for me anyway, every single second of the lead up to the race is useful to me. Like I've got uh, stuff to be doing, <laughs> like yeah. basically memorizing tracks. So that's what you'd focus on. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really handy. So after the first year when we'd figured out loads with Canyon, uh, I re-signed early to have a mechanic to help me. Mm. So they, they liked what I was doing. So they were happy to sign another multi-term contract, but with the addition of a mechanic. Um, and then I got my mate Dougie who I'd worked with for years in the bike shop he was like my apprentice mechanic he came on the road with me Um, so so that freed up that time that freed up that time and that was invaluable because he did the the, he cooked my my food as well and uh, looked after me so that was really good and so yeah it freed up time because I I mean, the effort thing that we were saying, that I was saying at the start, I mean, it takes away a bit of the fun of racing, but um, I basically just put so much effort into knowing the tracks. So I'd like write notes of every single track. So you'd be like an hour and 20 of racing if it's two days of racing and I'd have left, right, left, right for an hour and 20 of racing. We'd like round the rock, over the route, brake early here, pedal hard there, uh, and just basically tried to do better than my ability through effort that is so um, cool yeah. D- was this um did you go pro runs and refer yeah back to them? so i was i mean people maybe weren't that happy at the, at the time but i was one of the first people to like start l- walking some tracks like, i wouldn't walk them all but i'd start walking them getting an idea of what it was like before especially venues you'd never been to mm. uh I, I mean i was just thinking this is obviously going to happen it's better yeah so just because i'm the first one it's a professional sport everyone will do it in a year yeah um, and then you start seeing, and then it was funny because Vulios is obviously the epitome of professionalism. And every time we got to a track to have a walk, he'd be popping out the woods coming out of it. <laughs> he was like 10 minutes ahead every time. <laughs> <laughs> so you knew you were kind of on it if he popped out the woods and you were going. Yeah. Um, so yeah, started learning tracks, but that's where having the help was really good because I could um, just put more brain power on that. Yeah. Yeah. But in, in hindsight, I know brain power and physical power are kind of connected and I don't know if I was a bit burnt out come race day or whether that knowledge really helped me just ride clean. So a bit of both. Yeah. Probably. But at the time it felt right, so I'll have to go with it. But Yeah, it's certainly not something you think about how much work goes in to an enduro race. I remember I was riding, you know, uh, Wid Persak? Yeah, I know Vid, yeah, I rode He's with him. Yeah, he said he could ride down any track and it can be 10 minutes long. He said he literally had photographic memory. Yeah, Yeah, so do I actually. Do you? Yeah, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what it actually means, but I can just picture any bit of any track as if it's a photo um, that I've done. Um, And that that includes like rocks, roots. Yeah, yeah, and peripheral, it's weird. Like not detailed peripheral, but you just sort of know know what's going on. we were talking about this yesterday. We we actually watched Bernard's vlog from Hardline, and I was saying yeah. how Im- how impressive it is that he can like look at something and then just walk back up and be like, right, I'm just going to go there, go right there, right there, boom. And it's for me personally, it takes me ages to remember any is any it, track. Yeah. I'm like ten runs or something, and I'm starting to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I don't I know if it's got worse as I've got yeah. older, but I'm bad now. Like, I can ride tracks so many times and still be like, oh, right. I don't know where this one goes. No. I can't remember. <laughs> I find it's that that theory stuff so interesting, dude. I'm like full on dweeb about that because yeah. Bernie actually was the is the most broad. I go into specifics and freak myself out, so I'm like, mm. I need to get my front this side of this diagonal yeah, route yeah. because otherwise I'm going down or whatever. Yeah. Whereas he's just like, no, just open up generally. Yeah, just think yeah. Like, 
that general left vibe. general yeah. o- over there and no, that's a good way of doing it. But I'm very much like, I like blind racing when I don't know a thing and I can just react. I really enjoy that. But if I do know the track, I want to know it perfectly. Right. So it's like uh, peace of mind. Yeah. You seek perfection like in a downhill race, not like... Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, oh, I kind of know roughly where to go. Oh, I hope I don't mix those two bits up and break early and lose half a second. That would be really annoying. So I better learn exactly what's going on. And then you go down that rabbit hole five hours later. <laughs> You've memorized loads of tracks. So. That's really yeah. impressive, actually. Well, what um, <laughs> what tools do you have for when you're in a race run? Like, cause I find that mega interesting. If you've like, if if there's yeah. a rock that you made a note on that you wanted to downside and pump because mm. there's a flat section. What if you miss the rock? What do you do? Psychologically, um, yeah, I suppose you're just happy with ninety percent of what you've set out to achieve <laughs> but um yeah, yeah. can you I'm think back sure. to a perfect run <laughs> an enduro yeah 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 <laughs> really yeah no i uh yeah well perfect to what i've set out to achieve yeah. I, I achieve it most of the time wow. yeah. that is so sick <laughs> so cool <laughs> but yeah that's so impressive. Nice. So, so then so that dope. means, yeah so then that means regardless of result you're kind of happy because yeah you've set out. oh 100 percent yeah just uh, turn up, learn the tracks, um, ride as free as I can with the knowledge I've got, and then that's it. Mate, that's such <laughs> a, that makes racing sound so fun. I have such an opposite... <laughs> I do, I have such an opposite experience of it. Mm. I like the fact it's a race means I'm 100% going to race, do it badly. I'm not going to do it as fast. <laughs> okay. I'm going to fuck it up more. <laughs> and then, yeah, unless, unless I win, I would be... I, I, there's no way of me being... Are happy, happy with if you result. saw what I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's such a that's such a healthy and good way of doing it. Like, actually, that's I can see how people love racing if it's yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, I think I've never been massively competitive either, so yeah, that maybe helps. I mean, I will definitely be in some way from being passionate to improve, but yeah, mm. I think people who beat themselves up because they didn't beat a certain person, I've never done that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> oh. So, so how long were you at Canyon for? Uh, six, years. six years. Yeah, just did my spell on EWS with them. Yeah, yeah. And then how did you see the sport grow in that time? Like, what were some of the things? Yeah, it it got it just they, they just the streamlined the formula, which yeah. I I thought was a shame. So okay, okay. Hey man, what an episode that was! You did amazing in it, and so did you. You shone like a star. You shone like a moon. Can we also put something up here that you can yeah. click on for the next episode? How about we put a subscribe up there in the middle? Yeah, I love We're going to put idea. a video we think that our uh, lovely companionship yeah. will love yeah. on your face. On oh, my face? Yeah. So and they on can't my, see me now. Gone. And on my face, another video that we think people will love. And thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Please hit like and subscribe. You guys are the best. Peace and love.